Broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, everyone. Welcome today to our uh, webinar, Teaching Digital Literacy Strategies to Help Adult Learners Develop Computer and Technology Basics. Uh, my name is Nicole Caban, and I am the Education and Training Coordinator with the Florida Literacy Coalition. Today's webinar is hosted by the Florida Literacy Coalition, um, and it is made possible through the generous support of the Florida Department of Education, Division of Career and Adult Education. Before we begin, I'd like to um, get you a little bit familiar with your uh, tools. So you should have your uh, control panel on the right-hand side of your screen. So I'd like you to uh, look to the top of your control panel. You should see a red arrow button um, kind of pointing to the right. So if you click that, you will dock your control panel. If you click it again, you bring it back out. So if you don't wanna see it during the webinar, just click that to hide it away. Um, next on the main portion of your control panel, you'll see a little box that says questions. Um, there you should be able to type in any questions you have throughout the webinar. All technical questions uh, in regards to the webinar themselves, any problems that you have, you can type them in there and I will answer that to you privately. Any other questions will be asked to the presenter. Um, you'll also see a handout section. Now, if you notice, you'll have two handouts there that you can download. Just click the uh, handouts and you should be able to, it should prompt you to download those handouts right away. You can uh, download them now to follow along or download them later uh, whenever you'd like. If you have trouble with that, um, you can email me later and I can send it to you via email. All right, um, I'd also like to mention that uh, throughout the webinar, we will have a, a brief poll. Um, so when we do a poll, we'll simply uh, ask you a question and we'll pop up uh, some options that you can choose on the screen. Choose the best option that fits um, and then submit your um, response. All right, so with that, I'm going to go ahead and start. Um, our presenter today is Jessica Rich. Um, Jessica is a curriculum coordinator for GCFLearnFree.org, which is a free program of, of uh, Goodwill Industries of Eastern North Carolina and the Goodwill Community Foundation. So I'm going to go ahead and pass it over to Jessica now. Jessica? Thank you, Nicole. Um, as Nicole mentioned, um, there we go. Uh, I, my name is Jessica Meadows Rich. I am with an organization or a program called GCFLearnFree.org. And it is a free online education website that is run by the Goodwill Industries of Eastern North Carolina. The proceeds from the stores located here in Eastern North Carolina is what makes this website possible uh, for not only people here in Eastern North Carolina, but for people in Florida, all over the country, all over the world. Everything that we talk about today, uh, as far as anything that's found at GCFLearnFree.org is completely free. Um, I'm going to uh, definitely talk a little bit about who we are, but most of what we're going to talk about today is the types of content that you can find at gcflearnfree.org with a special focus on technology, specifically kind of basic technology skills. So we're going to go into a lot of depth about the types of tutorials, videos, and lessons that you can find at GCF Learn Free. But then at the end, we'll also talk a little bit about how you can use this content with the people that you serve. And we'll even talk a little bit about some other free resources uh, that we have found and that we've discovered. And uh, hopefully those resources will be helpful to you as well. I have with me today uh, Danielle Jackson. And so she'll be helping me as we ask questions throughout the presentation today. I do hope that if you have any questions, uh, if you have any um, comments at all throughout the, today's presentation, that you'll, you'll be able to use kind of the, the tools there in the sidebar to ask those questions. We want to make sure that we, we, answers every, we answer everybody's questions today. So to get things started, I have a question for you. Um, and this is a poll that Nicole is going to be sharing just to kind of get a, an idea of, of how familiar everyone in the audience is already with GCF Learn Free. Um, if you're very familiar with GCF Learn Free, hopefully you'll still get something out of today's presentation. We're always adding new things to the site, and so we can talk about some of the newer stuff that 
that we have recently added, but obviously, if you aren't very familiar at all, you're going to find out a lot of free, really awesome resources that hopefully you'll be able to use with the people you serve. Okay, so I uh, went ahead and uh, launched the poll, so we're going to go ahead and give it um, probably another 20 seconds for everyone to kind of vote here. And I'll let you know when I close that. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and close and share the results with everyone. So, uh, Jessica, it seems that 74% uh, are not familiar at all with uh, GCF Learn Free. 21% are somewhat familiar, and only 6% are very familiar. Okay. Well, that's awesome that we do have some people that are very familiar with the, the site. And so, um, so, again, I hope that you'll still see some things that are of interest to you today. But great. Uh, you know, we're always wanting to make sure that we find uh, new people. To, to talk to about our site and to make sure that um, all the people that can make use of this content um, know that it's available. So thank you everyone for, for participating in that poll. And I have another question for you, and this is not going to be in poll form. Uh, in the beginning when Nicole was kind of telling you about the, the kind of question and answer tool there in the sidebar, um, the, this is kind of helping me understand where your interests are. Uh, today's presentation, the description of the webinar was with a focus on basic technology skills. So here are a few kind of options, whether it's computer basics, or internet basics, so on and so forth. Maybe some more kind of advanced-ish type of technology topics with Microsoft Office or Google products, but really anything, anything specific that you're thinking about, um, that you have people come up to you that are asking specific questions. How do I open an email address? How do I start sending email? How do I create a resume and email it and attach it? You know, those kind of type things. Um, uh, so let's see, we've got, so I'm gonna give you a little, little bit here. So we've got um, computer basics, internet basics, Microsoft Office, we're definitely going to be talking about that today for sure. So we're going to be able to give you some really great resources on those things and more. Yay! <laughs> All right, we'll just wait for a few more. And if, I mean, if you don't have any specific ideas, that's fine too. You know, I just, I just at any point throughout today's presentation, if you do have any questions or, you know, there's something that I, I showed you um, and that you, you had a question about, then certainly please let us know. Um, at the very end of the, the presentation today, I'll have all my contact information. And so if you think of a question even after today's webinar that you, you thought of later and you wanted to ask, we can, we can definitely continue that conversation. So interested in apps for mobile devices, problem solving technology rich, so yeah, so you know, trouble, how to troubleshoot um, with computers, uh, how to use mobile devices, they're all kind of, you know, the, the way of, of we use mobile devices in our everyday life. Staying safe online, definitely, it's a huge concern. We wanna make sure that we're teaching people uh, what they need to be on the lookout for when they're on the internet, when they're banking, when they're shopping. Those are, those are definitely things. Um, Denise, is, uh, I've got a question here about uh, the handouts. Um, if you do the drop, Nicole, you might be able to talk a little bit because that's kind of more of a technical question about the, the handouts. Yeah, I can answer that privately. Or I'll just answer okay. it out loud. Uh, in the handout section, you should be able to just click them and download them. If you're unable to, I will. Uh, I can forward it to you via email after the webinar is over. Cool. Thank you. And then, Loretta, as far as how to indicate from the list, it, it's just if you want to just type in any of those from the list or anything that you're you're thinking of uh, beyond that list, you can you can certainly just type that right on in. But these are really great. These are awesome. I'm really glad that I'm seeing these staying safe online, internet basics, mobile devices. We're going to talk about all of these things and more. So thank you guys. I'm going to go ahead and move on. But if you think of something else, 
if you think of another topic, go ahead and, and shoot that right on in the box. That's no problem there. And then the um, I got this is not a question that I necessarily need you to, to answer. This is a question that I always ask in my my presentations. Today, you you were at what point you might have seen the announcement for this presentation. You read the description, and from that description, you likely joined because you have a specific hope. You had a specific wish of what you might get from this session. And so I just want you right now to just take a moment in your head to think about, based on this description, what you had really planned on taking away from today's presentation. I want you to think about that because when we get to the end of today's presentation, if I have not answered your questions, if I have not met your expectations, I want to make sure that I do. I want to make sure that whatever you had planned to get from this session, that you get it today. And so just think about that, jot it down if you want to. Um, and then when we reach the end, if you still have any questions that I did not cover that you had hoped that I would be able to answer for you, I want to make sure that I answer those questions. So, um, as I mentioned, we are a, a program of the Goodwill Industries of Eastern North Carolina. Our focus is very much on technology, but we also uh, offer tutorials in reading, math, and work and career. And we'll cover those briefly today as well. But today's, th today's presentation really is very much a focus on what we offer within technology. I'm going to show you a very quick uh, video that I feel does a pretty good job um, kind of explaining who we are. So I'm going to play this video for you really quickly. In today's changing world, there's always something more to learn. And for over a decade, we've strived to create lessons and videos that help explain it all. We look for topics that are important for the future, as well as those that are overlooked or underrepresented. And occasionally, we just dive into things that we're passionate about. Our goal is to deliver lessons with clarity and have them be approachable to everyone. We use conversational language and put a lot of thought into the pacing and order of things. Our website features new lessons posted regularly, along with videos, audio content, interactives, and more. We invite you to look around, and we hope you like what you see. So from that video, talking about kind of our approach to learning and uh, an approach to why we choose the things that we choose that we put on our website, um, I'm going to invite you also, if you want to, during today's presentation, if you wanted to navigate to gcflearnfree.org. And while I'm, I'm talking about the website, if you want to even go to the website and follow along, um, that's certainly, uh, I, I welcome you to do that. That might be an interesting way to, to find out a little bit more about what we're talking about today. Um, because essentially what I'm going to be doing is giving you a website tour, um, but obviously it's going to be very static. Um, so it might be interesting for you to be able to, um, to go through and, and be able to click on some of the things you're seeing that's interesting. This is our home page. This is what you would see when you arrive at gcflearnfree.org. If you click on the topics there in the top right, left corner, you can see there kind of a selection of um, some of the topics that we present on our site. You can see again that kind of focus on technology, the Microsoft, basic computer skills, internet skills, Google, um, but even kind of getting in even into some more of the 21st century skills and talking about uh, you know wearables and 3D printing. Um, the sharing economy. And so we're going to talk about all of these things and more today. Uh, we have, as the video mentioned, we've been around for some time. And in that time, we've, we've been lucky enough to serve over 100 million people uh, since our inception. Uh, we offer quite a number of topics and lessons and interactives. Um, all of, again, our content can be found at gcflearnfree.org. Uh, our videos are on YouTube at our YouTube channel. Um, so hopefully in all of this content, uh, you'll be able to find something that's useful for you. All right. So as I mentioned, we're really going to be kind of doing like a um, 
video, kind of a website tour today. So we'll go right in and start talking about some of the content that might be useful to you. Do we have any questions? No, she's just giving the link to everybody. Oh, okay, cool. Okay, so it looks like Nicole shared the link to everyone. If you, again, want to kind of click on that link and follow along. So again, today's description, the webinar was really kind of a focus on these technology basics, these digital literacy skills, the idea that um, being able to help the people that you serve with some of the more common technology skills they may encounter in their day-to-day -day lives. Uh, this is uh, a lot of how people know GCF Learn Free, the cost of our computer basics tutorial, our other technology skills, and so we're going to um, kind of go through kind of uh, what our website looks like when you encounter, if you're not you know, following along with the, the website. Um, if you clicked on the technology topic, then this is the screen that you would encounter. Again, a selection of different technology topics there. If you clicked on any one of these, if for instance, you clicked on computers, then you'll see here uh, a variety of different computer topics, computer basics, something as basic as a mouse tutorial, which is an interactive for people that are truly first time users of computers. Um, you know, a mouse, using a mouse can be very intimidating. Uh, using a computer for the first time, and I'm probably not telling you anything you don't know. Uh, if that's not been something that's been in your life on a regular basis, a lot of people feel that if they touch the mouse or if they touch the computer, they'll break it. Um, so really getting them used to the, the mouse, used to how using it, um, to understand that there, there aren't any consequences here, uh, that you won't break it, that, it, it, you know, that it's, it's something that they can become comfortable using um, and, and not have and build up that confidence as well. With all of our tutorials, we have this kind of sequential layout. However, there isn't any kind of um, it, there isn't any kind of requirement that you follow the sequence of lessons in any kind of order. Um, one thing that's also useful to mention at this point too is that you do not have to log in to our site. There is no logging in, there's no account creation, there isn't, you know, obviously it's free. There are no catches here. If you navigate to gcflearnfree.org and you begin clicking around, you can access all of the content without ever having to enter any personal data. Um, and so it really is completely self-driven. Uh, it can be something that a learner works through sequentially. If they truly are completely new to using a computer, then they can work themselves all the way through what is a computer, the basic parts of computer, and so on. But perhaps they're interested in something very specific. Um, they can just skip right ahead and click on, you know, the buttons and ports of a computer. We have designed this for adult learners with adults in mind with the idea that they are going to be maybe approaching their learning journey on their own as individuals and they have their own questions that they're seeking answers for. And so it really is completely self-paced. They can watch a video, video as often as they need to. They can take as much time as they need to, reading the lesson, using the interactives. Um, and so that's what it's created with that in mind. However, certainly you as service providers can use this content. We're going to talk more in detail about this later, but um, you can use it however you feel you need to with people you serve, whether it's existing programs, one-on-one, -on -one, just sharing the link. Um, you can really make this whatever you need it to be for you and for your purposes. It's very open in that way. Um, but I did want to just express, you'll see these numbers. That doesn't mean you have to follow one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, and just to underline the fact that this really truly is meant to be self-driven, self-paced. Um, it really is, uh, make it what you want it to be. As I've kind of mentioned a couple of times, the, the idea that we have interactives, we have videos, we have written content, uh, we even have quizzes 
at the end of most of our tutorials. Um, again, with the idea that it's self-paced, there isn't any requirement that people need to take these quizzes. There are, they can take the quiz if they're interested in it. Uh, we actually find most individuals do not opt in to take quizzes of their own interest. Um, these quizzes are typically used by teachers or service providers that wanted quizzes for their own, their own needs. But um, we really do understand that everyone learns differently, uh, that there are visual learners and there are people that learn by doing. Um, and so we really try to respond to all of those different learning styles, whether it's through the written lessons, through videos, through something like the Practice Connecting Cables Interactive, um, really hopefully meeting everyone where they are in their learning journey. So this is just an example of some of the things that you might see in really any of our tutorials. Obviously, this is an example within the Computer Basics tutorial, but you will encounter many of these uh, types of content spread throughout the website. Again, just trying to give you a, an idea of some of the content that we offer beyond uh, just computer basics, basic computer skills, the typing tutorial, the mouse tutorial. Then we get into some of the uh, more dedicated online skills. So the idea of um, just using the internet in your day-to-day -day life. Uh, somebody mentioned kind of the troubleshooting. That kind of gets into, well, how do you set up your Wi-Fi network? How do you set up a printer? At that point, you really are, that's something that's very intimidating to people that aren't comfortable with technology. Um, maybe they know how to use a computer. Maybe they know if they kind of get on a computer that's already set up for them, um, they kind of generally know how to maybe open up uh, word processing. They know how to open up, uh, you know, a browser and begin surfing online, that kind of type thing. But then you start getting into the hows and the whys of it working uh, and setting up a computer, and that can be quite intimidating. What do you do if a computer it gets a virus? Obviously, that's a big concern. It's it's an internet safety concern, but then it's that also taking care of your computer, troubleshooting any issues. Um, that's something that people feel like are, is way beyond them. And so we really try to create, as the video that I showed you in the beginning, I mentioned we, we really do try to uh, adopt a tone that's very approachable, that assumes no prior knowledge, that really just talks to everyone in a very conversational, approachable tone, letting them know that they're not stupid, that nobody has all the right answers, and that you can do this. Um, this may feel scary, this may feel intimidating, but here's the information and you can figure out how to set up a Wi-Fi network or you can figure out what to do if it looks like your computer has gotten a virus. Beyond uh, just what is a computer and then also being able to get online, which is the fun stuff, you know, we don't really talk much about operating systems and then managing files and managing user accounts and parental controls. And those are things that are, are really important. You know, managing your computer for your family's use, making sure that uh, you're, you're making sure that your children are staying safe online. Um, if you have a Windows machine, which are very popular, we have tutorials for Windows 10, 8, 7, XP. Is there one between 7 and XP? <laughs> and beyond. And then obviously also if, uh, if you do have a Mac, we have Mac OS um, tutorials as well. Um, so really trying to um, make sure that all of our bases are covered on all of the different types of operating systems that people may approach uh, the, uh, the world of technology on. Getting into, um, so you know, the, the previous one that's, that's kind of more of the how, how do you get online and and just kind of the, the what's, but then really, okay, now getting online and being able to uh, be productive, take action online. How do you create an email account? Uh, how do you send an email with an attachment? Um, and here again, we've got some examples of some, these here on the left, you have an example of what we call a labeled graphic. Um, but these little buttons that you're able to kind of click around and explore and interface. Um, and then, of course, I haven't mentioned it, but you've probably seen a number of times at this point, 
that um, you know we we try to have as much fun as we can here in the office, but we we also recognize that that you know sometimes it's it's fun to have some interesting illustrations, some fun graphics to get people engaged, to get people you know to use some humor to lighten the mood. And so we have some some really great artists here on staff uh, that create these really great graphics. I didn't mention, but uh, I, so I, I hate that I didn't mention it earlier, but all of the graphics that you've seen thus far and all the graphics that you'll see um, moving forward were created by uh, the team members here that work at gcflearnfree.org. Um, so it's a lot of fun for us to be able to create uh, these, these fun graphics, the, the videos. Um, we're located here in downtown Raleigh. Uh, we have a group of nine content creators that are responsible for um, all of the content that you see. So and it is fun. I mean, again, these, these fun graphics, we've, we've got some things that we, we really kind of have become our little mascots. And so I always like the broken computer guy. So getting into maybe not necessarily advanced, but maybe at least intermediate type technology skills. Uh, a lot of people who do know about gcflearnfree.org likely initially discovered the website because of our office tutorials. These are very popular, uh, obviously a wide ranging popularity in traditional office type environments is a skill uh, that's needed in most office type positions. Um, and so again, with the people that you might be serving uh, beyond just needing basic technology skills, really at this point to not only just operate in their everyday lives, but it's increasingly important in most jobs, um, regardless of the position, to, to be able to uh, send an email, to be able to use a computer. Um, but especially if you're working with anyone who's interested at all in maybe transitioning to an office type environment, then being able to use uh, Microsoft Office, especially Word, PowerPoint, and Excel, um, at a, and then get to a comfortable point of being able to, to use these programs, being able to put that on their resume, things of that nature, um, and that's very important. And uh, so we have Microsoft Office, we just launched uh, Microsoft Office 2019, uh, and then we have tutorials for 2016, 2013, 2010, 2007, 2003, is there an Office XP, and then I think that's, oh, an Office 2000, okay, wow, we go way back. Um, and so these are very, these are some of our more robust tutorials. Um, many of these tutorials are, well, more than 25 lessons long, they have videos, um, lots of interactives, uh, lots of graphics. And so the point here being really, if you are completely new to Microsoft Office, these tutorials will take a complete beginner and teach them what we feel are the most common tasks that they will encounter in most office environments. We don't get into a lot of very specific or very advanced type skills. So we would certainly show someone how to use Microsoft, I'm sorry, use Excel formulas and functions, um, how to use pivot tables, how to do a mail merge, um, but we wouldn't get into how to do a, a how to create a macro um, or maybe some, uh, we get, uh, we actually go pretty deep into Excel, honestly. Um, but there probably, there's inevitably there's some Excel type functions or whatnot that we wouldn't cover. But again, with this idea that we would hopefully take a complete beginner and be able to skill them up to a point where they would have the confidence, they would have the comfort in being able to get a job and be able to use these skills in that new position. So it's something to, to keep in mind for the people that you're working with, but then also, you know, for yourselves. Uh, for staff development, for anyone uh, that you know that has a question about Microsoft Office. Um, we, like I said, we just released the, the newest uh, version, 2019, and so, you know, if in your office you transition from one version of Microsoft Office to another and you need to figure out what the new changes are, 
Um, really, all of the things that I'm showing you today could be relevant for you in your professional life or for your colleagues uh, with your staff. Do we have, is everything? Yep, okay. Um, I just saw like a hand raised thing and I didn't know what that was. Um, so again, kind of, I, I would, I don't know, I wouldn't necessarily maybe consider mobile devices in an intermediate type level, but as far as uh, using mobile devices and wearables and kind of other things that aren't traditional desktops and laptops, an increasing part of our daily lives, um, being able to use a mobile phone, to be productive with it, to be able to um, do what you need to in your daily life and, and figure out how to make these devices work for you. And so we do, we have um, iPhone tutorial, iPad tutorial, and Android basics tutorial. Um, and then we also just have even information about um, we just kind of have like a technology buying guide and that covers uh, not only buying mobile devices, but certainly buying computers and laptops and Chromebooks and things of that nature. And then wearables have also become a part of that, smartwatches and fitness trackers um, and, and many other kind of type technology, kind of the internet of things, kind of these, these devices that are um, increasingly becoming a part of our, and kind of interwoven with our daily lives. Related to Microsoft Office, we have really developed a lot of Google tutorials in the last few years. Increasingly, we see, especially schools, using um, the G Suite. So using Google Docs, Google Drive, Google Sheets, Google Slides, um, and so, if that's maybe, and also offices, regular enterprise is, is also transitioning more and more to the G Suite offerings rather than the traditional Microsoft Office offerings. And so if this is something, again, that's relevant for you in your professional life, um, this is really great. There's tutorials other than uh, the ones I just mentioned. We also, again, you can see Gmail, Google Maps, Google Forms, Google Classrooms. Um, you as professionals may be using Google Classrooms or Forms as well. And so I encourage you to check these out, see if there's anything there that might be helpful to you, as well as the people you serve. Social media goes without saying, something that uh, probably, whether we like it or not, uh, touches us all. And so it's something that is constantly changing, something that we work very hard to keep up to date with, to make sure that when there is a new privacy change within Facebook, or even when there is even a new social platform, that we're there to be able to talk about it, to be able to uh, provide information about it and answer any questions that our learners may have. Um, as I, I showed you earlier, we have quite a bit of content and it is, not only our job to create new content, but also to make sure that the content that we have created, that we are keeping it up to date. And so uh, almost as much effort is spent in creating content as it is updating content. So to pause here, that's really kind of a broad overview of specifically our technology tutorials. Um, and the bulk of the content that you will find at GCF Learn Free and really kind of today's focus um, for the presentation. But I was going to just really quickly talk about some of the other things you might be able to find on the website. But I wanted to pause here to see if you had any questions about anything that you had seen thus far. And it's fine if you if you don't, uh, if you think of anything as we move on, just ask anytime, no problem at all. Ask after today, you can email me privately, there's no problem. So some of the other content areas that we cover, work and career is a big focus of ours, obviously being a program of goodwill. Um, but I mean, interestingly, technology is increasingly more a part of that job application process. Um, maybe the people that you're working with and today you, you came to this presentation with the idea that you wanted to get some resources to help your, your, the people you serve with digital literacy skills. 
And maybe it's because they realize that now if they want to uh, apply for a job, they're going to have to be able to do that online. Um, and to be able to navigate the whole job application process now that it is 100% online or by using a computer at a kiosk or something of that nature. Um, and so hopefully you'll also take a chance to take a moment to look through some of our work and career tutorials because that may be relevant for you with the people that you serve. We even have some more, so we, we certainly have kind of, as I showed you that list before, the, the usual job search resume interview, kind of what you think of when you think of work and career tutorials. But um, in the last year, we've really tried to kind of go in a, in a new direction, talk about really, you know, the experience of, of working and, and what things you need to know um, that aren't addressed in a traditional how to write a resume lesson. Um, we have a great new tutorial on getting a job with a criminal record. Um, as the kind of sharing economy and, you know, uh, freelancing becomes more a part of the economy, addressing that with part-time jobs. So that might be something that might be of interest. We have a reading program that is based on the 1,000 most commonly used words in the English language. The idea here being Again, addressing uh, adult literacy, so the focus is for adults that are native English speakers, uh, but that maybe need a little bit of work on their literacy skills. And so that's kind of the focus initially, but we do have uh, kind of an ESL portal. That's really probably great for someone who has already got a pretty good foundation of the English language, but wants to pr practice vocabulary. And then uh, we also have this really fun grammar section um, that has some kind of non-traditional graphics to say the least. We have math tutorials that tend to focus on some of the more basic math skills. So, you know, addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, etc. We go into algebra topics, but that's really kind of as far as we go. So if you do have any people that you're working with that are maybe perhaps um, preparing for their GED. This may be an option for you, um, but as I said, it really only goes up to algebra topics, and so it wouldn't be a full uh, course that would help someone completely prepare for the GED. And honestly, again, it's for you as well. When you, if you have children and they come home and start asking you questions about converting decimals to fractions, et cetera, I don't know about you, but that's not something I do on a day-to-day -day basis. I did it in whatever grade I did it in fourth grade and then promptly forgot it. And so it's, it's really great for everyone. We have someone here that actually um, was going back to school and needed to uh, take kind of just a basic math entrance exam. And um, she took the exam and she actually didn't pass it the first time. She said that she looked, she, I think it was like something on the fractions, decimals and percents. And she looked at our tutorial, kind of brushed up on it, took the exam again, and she passed it. So it's, it's you know, there are many applications for it. Some of the newer interesting things that uh, we've also been doing that aren't under technology reading or math, uh, we have a series on graphic design. These videos have been wildly popular. Uh, I really, really, really encourage you to take a look at some of these. Again, professional applications, if you, uh, you know, uh, many of you probably likely work in nonprofits or education uh, departments where maybe you wear many hats and perhaps you are sometimes tasked with designing things, even though that's not your actual background, uh, creating presentations or flyers or something of that nature. And so um, this may be of interest to you or just, you know, it's just something to new to learn. I mentioned earlier kind of the idea that, uh, you know, as technology changes, uh, there are more and more things that um, are changing in our day-to-day -day lives. The idea of kind of the sharing economy, the gig economy, automation, how is that going to impact us? How do we, how do we respond to change? Um, and so uh, this could certainly be useful not only to the people that you serve, um, but even if you have questions about how does the gig economy work and how does Airbnb work, um, this might be something of interest to you as well. 
We've done a series on creativity. Uh, we just recently released a brand new video talking about um, embracing your creative impulses. Um, and so this has just been, uh, you know, just something fun that we feel is important to talk about, um, again, both for your professional life as well as your personal life. Communication, so important in the professional realm, but also obviously in the personal realm. Focus here has been especially on business communication, but also just talking about how to empathize, make sure you're not miscommunicating, reading body language, things like that. And decision making, this is something um, that impacts us all. Why is it hard to make decisions? And you know, kind of getting into the psychology that's going on when we have that thing that we call a gut check. What's really going on there? Um, how can I get better at making decisions? Um, and so that would probably be helpful for, for all of us. This is uh, technology related, but kind of in a different sense, really just talking about um, these kind of higher level computer science terms that maybe people are encountering. Um, when you start talking about algorithms and binary, when you really start getting into kind of some of the more coding type, type terms. And so um, this may be, uh, if you know anybody that's interested in getting into computer science and wants to know more uh, kind of foundational kind of type terms, then this might be a resource for them. As I, as I mentioned earlier, we have a lot of videos. Most of our tutorials at this point are video and written lessons, and you can discover all of our videos at our YouTube channel. Um, if that is your preferred way of learning, then you can just have a video only experience. But from all of our tutorials, you can also just access the related uh, playlist um, directly from our tutorial pages on our website. Oh, there's lots of questions. Okay, cool. All right, what yeah, questions? Nicole is going to read them out. Okay, cool. Okay, Nicole? Yes, yeah, so um, we have quite a few questions here, so I'm just going to start going through them. Um, okay. Hang on one sec. Just going through the ones that haven't been answered through your um, okay. presentation already. Okay, so first one here. Um, Someone's looking for alternate ways of teaching digital literacy to older students who are totally unfamiliar with the computer. Okay. Um, I'm getting ready to go into some of the ways that you can use our content. But interestingly, a lot of our content is pretty agnostic. It is, it is created with adults in mind, although certainly a lot of schools, K through 12, use us. So we don't really talk that much about specific groups. We don't really talk a lot about specific backgrounds. We really do, however, create all of our content with the idea that a complete beginner someone who, in, your, in this case, has, has no background, no familiarity with, with technology, with computers, um, would hopefully be able to, to use these tutorials. Um, so I don't, I likely don't necessarily have a lot of information about specific strategies for working with that group. However, Nicole, I shared with Nicole a link to our curriculum guide. So we do have, I'll talk about this in a moment, but we have created teacher guides. And in those teacher guides, there's certainly information about using our content, creating assessments, um, strategies for working uh, with different types of size groups, or working one-on-one -on -one kind of type thing. And so there may be some information in those teacher guides that you may find of use. I'm going to go ahead and link the teacher guides in the chat right now. Um, yeah. If you're patient, I'll go ahead and yeah. do that right now. Um, okay. Oh, it didn't really paste that well. I think you should be able to copy and paste that into the link. Um, 
Okay, so we have some more questions here. Another one uh, kind of based on um, level. Um, Sarah uh, Bab would like to know what reading levels the materials were designed for. Um, specifically, she has uh, very low level learners um, who probably couldn't read these pages. Well, in that case, um, the hope would be that, uh, so, okay, so to answer the first question, reading levels, um, nothing is beyond a seventh grade reading level, for sure. Um, so we, we do run those, those kind of, whatever the test is, I can't remember, where you, you run the, the, uh, the text through the tool and you're able to determine what kind of reading level it is. And um, so we definitely make sure, we constantly check to make sure that it's not above a seventh grade reading level. However, seventh grade reading level is honestly pretty advanced um, when you're talking about low literacy level users. And so the approach that we have, as I mentioned, we, you know, recognizing that we have people that have all kinds of different learning styles. The videos in many of our tutorials, the written content is the script of the video. So in those cases, it might be helpful if they are watching the video, listening to the audio, and reading along to the lesson. Um, there's that reinforcement, they're seeing the text, they're hearing it essentially read to them. Now that's not the case in every single tutorial, but definitely from Microsoft Office 2016, Microsoft Office 2019, and almost all of the tutorials that have been created in the last two years, we actually create the video first, and then the script is the written lesson. So that may be one approach um, of helping those the more lower literacy types. And even if the, the video and the text don't sync up completely, hopefully in those cases, the video will be helpful in at least getting information, even if there's some additional information that was covered in the lesson. Um, videos may come into play a lot with some of, the, the, some of those learners. Okay, another question here is, um, uh, what is, uh, GCF Global and how does it differ from GCF Learn Free? GCFLearnFree.org is the English version of GCF Global. And so GCF Global is our um, kind of overarching education title. We have a sister site in Columbia they produce Spanish and Portuguese content. When you navigate to GCF Learn Free, the right corner, you can actually switch. And I was going to talk about that in a moment too. You can switch to other languages. Um, so if you are serving Spanish I, and you're in Florida, so maybe that's something that's relevant for you guys, um, Spanish, Portuguese learners, then they're able to access the content from GCF Aprende Libre and GCF uh, Aprende Libre, um, and so GCF Global is is kind of the overarching title for these three different sites in three different languages. Okay, um, have any of the tutorials in math, reading, and work, work and careers, um, have they been customized for use on the smartphone? Our entire site is mobile friendly, the only exception being that some of our interactives, especially especially with reading, because reading is in flash, um, so it's, <laughs> it's becoming less and less relevant, um, but some interactives don't work on a mobile device, but the content therein, you know, the, the videos, obviously, the written text, um, and that's the other thing, too, is that by and large, if there is a video, there's also written content. There isn't there, you know, so if, if something isn't accessible for technology reasons, then you're you're still able to get information. You're still able to get something out of it. Um, for instance, you know, all of our videos are YouTube videos. If for some reason YouTube is blocked in your area, you're still able to access the lesson. And so um, we have redundancies in place for those kind of type things as far as any kind of um, failings of technology accessibility or anything like that. Um, but yeah, we do create 
um, the content with the idea of being mobile friendly. Okay, a few more questions. Um, uh -huh. Is there a way to verify that someone has completed the tutorial or quizzes? So as I mentioned, you there is no account creation, there is no signing in, so therefore there is no tracking. Um, what there are some things that can be done. Uh, we do have quizzes at the end of most of our tutorials, and so um, that is like I said, individual users don't use those, but um, service providers tend to. And uh, so that might be one way for a learner to be able to demonstrate whether or not they know the information so they could take that quiz and then be able to, you can see then the screen at the end of what their score was. Um, they can take a screenshot of it if they're able to just do that. They can print out the page um, from the computer with the quiz results. Um, so that's one way that they'd at least be able to demonstrate knowledge um, and whether or not they have gained information from the tutorial. You can certainly create your own assessments as well, um, or there are, you know, kinds of other ways that people will link to every lesson, you know, if they have some kind of online class or something of that nature, they might link to every page in the tutorial, and then if the person, you know, clicked on it, if you had like some kind of LMS or something like that. So there have been certainly ways that service providers have created ways to track learning, but on our site, no, there isn't a way to track. Okay, uh, do you know if any of these GCF Learn Free materials are being used by uh, learning circles offered by public libraries or adult basic skills uh, programs? Yes. <laughs> so we, We've done webinars for practically every state library in the country. We were at ALA two years ago, and it was like we were rock stars or something. Just everybody, all these librarians coming over, and um, every you know talking about how much they they use us in their library and their programs, things of that nature. Um, so yeah, I mean you know we served 30 million people last year. We're in K through 12 schools, businesses. We're partnered with Google. We're partnered with Facebook. We're partnered with YouTube. You know, so, you know, we're, we're in a variety of different um, organizations, nonprofits, churches, high school groups, K through 12, universities, community colleges, businesses. Um, and so the thing is, we're so open. You can access it. You don't need to contact us to let us know that you're using it. So we don't have a full list of every single library that has ever used us in the history of ever. Um, but the list is long. All right, and the final question, what are MOOCs? Was that on our, have I talked about MOOCs? Okay, I was like, did I, I don't remember talking about MOOCs. Uh, MOOC, uh, M-O-O-C stands for Massive Open Online Course. Um, interestingly, Forbes just did an article on us talking about whether or not we were the next big thing in MOOCs. Whether or not people actually would define us as a MOOC, it depends on your definition of MOOC. What it means is whether or not, is it an online course? And the massive part is, is it, does it are there a lot of people that are accessing this open course? The traditional MOOCs have been run by MIT and Harvard and, and kind of large entities. Um, where there's truly an enrollment and there's a professor at the helm and there's thousands of people in this course and there's projects being done and assignments being done. That's probably the most traditional type of MOOC, but if at the very definition, whether or not it's this online open course that's available to millions of people, all available at the same time, using it all at the same time, then perhaps we're also a MOOC as well. All right, and that's it for questions for now. Okay. Well, if you have any more, I love those questions. That's great. I'm so excited that everybody's getting some questions asked. Hopefully those answers were helping. And here's maybe a little bit more, you know, that we kind of addressed maybe some of this and some of those questions, but we'll dig in a little bit more deeply in the ways that you might be able to use GCF Learn Free. So Nicole passed along that uh, teacher's guide that will 
give you some really great strategies of how you might be able to use GCF Burn Free content in your existing program. You can use the site just like a textbook. As I mentioned before, you can be uh, you can choose various tutorials or sample various different lessons from a variety of different tutorials. You can work through a tutorial sequentially. Uh, the students can all be working on the same thing together, or maybe it's more of an open kind of type experience where uh, the teacher is more of a um, reference point, a, a guide in the, and answering questions as students are kind of driving their own journey. It depends on how you prefer to set up your class, uh, how you want to run your programs, but it really is, the content is there for you and how you want to use it, and however you want to structure your class. Other than the, the teacher's guides, uh, Nicole, I think you also have a, a link for an application. Now, as I mentioned just a, mo a few moments ago, we're very open. You can use GCF Learn Free content in your existing programs. Um, however, if you do not have access to the internet wherever you are leading your programs, uh, we do serve a lot of prisons, a lot of correctional facilities. Obviously, they don't have access to the internet. Nicole mentioned the other day that there were a number of, of people in, in this group that may also have kind of correctional facility, that have programs within the inmate population. And so we do have an offline version that works for those situations. And so Nicole can share with you um, there's just a quick application process just to, to go through to, to get access to the offline version. Otherwise, though, if you don't need the offline version, you do not need to complete that application. GCF Learn Free content is there for you and however you see fit. It's really just don't worry about the application unless you need the offline version. If you don't have programs where this necessarily fits, where you need kind of content like this to, uh, to refer to in your, your classes, uh, maybe it's just something uh, that you put on your website somewhere, you mention it to the, the people that you're serving. We do have flyers available on our website as well, um, so you can download those flyers, print them off, just sharing it for anyone that you think it might be relevant. That might be something that you would do as well. Obviously, I mentioned a moment before, we have Spanish and Portuguese content through our sister sites, but actually we also even have other languages available at GCF Learn Free, and these are all through volunteer translators. Now, this selection is pretty random. It just depends on what the translators have been interested in working on, or these are oftentimes a lot of teachers in, in countries that want to be able to translate our content into their native language so they can use it in their classrooms. Um, so we're always looking for any volunteer translators, uh, but if this is something that you happen to know that you have a, uh, you're serving people that uh, speak these languages, this might be something that might be relevant for you. In the very beginning, I mentioned that we, uh, I was just going to share with you just a few other free resources that also offer technology skills. And so these are some of our favorites, but those handouts that Nicole shared is an even longer list and beyond just technology skills. Some of those um, are, are getting into some more advanced skills or learning languages online, things of that nature. And these may be resources that you're already aware of, but I just wanted to share um, just in case these are new to you. Um, so these are some of our favorites. The digitallearn.org uh, site is something that's actually run by the Public Library Association. So that's interesting that they not only have their own content, but they even have kind of a community for service providers to be able to discuss topics, discuss maybe some of the very questions that you guys were asking that I didn't really have a great answer for. Um, how do, what are some strategies for specifically working with more senior adults that are brand new to computers? Those kind of type questions, being able to talk to other serv service providers that are with those populations, that might be something for you. 
the learnmyway.com is a it's kind of it's UK based, so there are some kind of differences. Um, some things that you can kind of clearly tell are, are not US specific, but I've been really impressed with their tutorials and some of the topics that they're choosing to cover. And then uh, digitalliteracy.gov is a really great kind of collection of a bunch of different resources. They, they've got a really great library of resources that are similar to gcflearnfree.org. Uh, on guard online, really talking about that internet safety, making sure that we're staying safe online. Uh, everyoneon.org, not only do they provide uh, content about technology, but also they're working to make uh, the internet affordable, getting low cost computers, those kind of type things to any residents that may qualify. So if these are people uh, that you might be working with that you think might be quali might qualify rather for um, free or affordable internet and some cheaper uh, computers, that might be something that would be of interest to you as well. And then this North Star Digital Literacy Project is really, really interesting. This is a um, tutorial, this is kind of a program that at the end you are able to get a, a certificate um, at the end that, that kind of essentially says that, you know, you're, you're computer savvy, you're tech savvy kind of type thing. Um, and so that's been a very popular project. I really like what they're doing. I think they're based out of Minnesota. So that we're we're at our time, but I, I'm I'm fine to to hang out with you guys if you need to leave um, because I told you that we were going to be at finishing up at three o'clock. Um, then I, I appreciate that uh, you joined us today. I hope that you got something out of it. This is the time to think about all right, what was I planning on getting from today's presentation um, and what questions do I still have what answers was I what what answers were, were I looking what was I looking for I can't talk um, and making sure that I've answered those questions for you and then as I said you know there's my contact information uh, maybe you don't have any questions right now but if there's something that you think of tonight next week next month then uh, feel free to, to contact me and, and let me know if there's anything that we can do to help you. Uh, Jessica, we have a we have a couple of questions here. Sure. We have a request. Uh, can you uh, go back to the last uh, the last slide with the last three links that you were sharing? Yeah. This one. Yeah. Um, OK, uh, let's see. So um, there's one question of where do they obtain the application for the offline version of the prisons? And I, I actually did share that in the chat box. Um, there should be a, a clickable hyperlink that I sent out at 256, and that is an application, um, I believe. Um, and I can send that to everyone as well after okay. the webinar. Um, let's see. I think that's it. Um, let's see. I think that's it in, in as far as questions go. Okay. So um, thank you all. thank you so much for joining us, uh, Jessica and Danielle. Uh, we really appreciate you sharing the resources. Um, this presentation is going to be available uh, on YouTube uh, and our website. So I will make sure that uh, the recording gets around to everybody. Um, uh, also a. a few housekeeping notes. I just want to um, make sure that everyone uh, completes the survey that I will be sending around uh, either today or tomorrow. You'll all be getting a certificate of completion for this webinar as well. Um, so please, please make sure to take our survey. That's how we um, kind of inform what we, uh, what kind of webinars we have in the future is um, through your feedback. So we really appreciate any feedback that you can give us. Um, and with that, I believe we're going to close for today. Uh, thank you again, um, Jessica um, and GCFLearnFree.org. And thank you uh, again to the uh, Florida Department of um, Education for um, helping make this webinar possible. Thank you. Thank you, Nicole. Thank you, everyone, for joining. And feel free to, to contact me anytime you have questions. Thank you.